you find that your art needs more clarity, more pop. Well, let me show you how to do just that, and I'll throw in a few tips in the end as well to further improve your line work, so stay tuned. Hello everyone, Jose Fernandez here. First things first, the app I am using is Clip Studio Paint on the iPad Pro. It definitely has to be my favorite app by far. I'm happy to say that this tutorial is done for them too. Thank you Clip Studio for this awesome opportunity. If you would like to check out this tutorial in written form with images to go along with it, I'll leave a link for y'all to check out in the description below. Now let's get started. Line quality is one of the most important aspects of manga and comic storytelling, but often forgotten about. Making your manga read clearly is crucial. It can mean having someone continue reading or quickly walking away. Whoever is reading your manga, they should be able to grasp what's going on instantly, especially since majority of the readers will look at the panel for just a few seconds. So if we can improve clarity with just line quality, why not? Let me show you how you can improve your lines to help tell an engaging story. In this tutorial, I'll be using the G-Pen brush that comes stock with Clip Studio Paint. You can use other brushes, but if possible, use one where you can vary the size with pressure sensitivity. And I'm also working on a canvas at 600 DPI. All right, so step one, determine your point of focus and the different layers of your composition, like your foreground, middle ground, and background, as each one of these aspects will differ in line thickness. Step two, begin inking your foreground characters and objects. Since the foreground is the closest to the reader, we want the outlines to be bolder and thicker. Subconsciously, the reader will think the thicker outlines are closer and the thinner outlines to be further away. Try and keep the lines inside the outline thinner as well. The outline of the character is sometimes called holding lines because they literally hold the characters and objects details together, giving it more solidity and making it easier to read. Step 3. Once you're done inking the foreground, you can start inking the middle ground. What we have to keep in mind now is to make the lines of the middle ground thinner than the foregrounds. This gives the illusion of depth and atmospheric perspective. It also separates the foreground and middle ground. The reader will be able to distinguish that the closest character is in a different plane than the group of guys behind them. Step 4. When you're done with the middle ground, you can start inking the background and the same rules apply. Thinner lines the further people and objects are. But you can also make exceptions. For example, in this illustration, I want to bring attention to the young woman in the background shouting. So I will make her outline just a bit thicker than the other people and objects around her. Not too thick though, as we still want to keep her in the background. One thing you want to keep in mind in order to keep your characters and world more believable is to remember the light source direction. I have the light source located in the upper left of the scene, so I make sure that the areas that wouldn't get hit with light as much to make the outline thicker. This gives the illusion of shadow and can also help give objects more volume. Take for example the tentacles of this cute octopus. I have thicker lines on the underside of the tentacles and lighter lines on the top. Step 6, an easy one. After you're mostly done inking, you can start filling in the blacks. Step 
Step 7. Look over your illustration and adjust your line weights accordingly. A lot of times I find myself jumping around a piece and may not remember to thicken some of the lines. For example, the main character of this shot in the foreground, I thickened up the lines to make him pop a bit more and really separate him. Alright, final step, now it's time to clean up. Look over everything and clean lines that shouldn't be intersecting or are just not supposed to be there at all. Sometimes we just forget and we may do little mistakes here and there and this is the perfect time to just clean, in, clean things up and get it ready to go. That's going to be it for this illustration, but here are some quick tips before we wrap this up. Tip 1. Every artist has their own style. That goes for inking style as well. So here are some examples of how an inking style may make something look different. Tip 2. You can depict a bright light hitting an object or person by breaking up the outline a bit to make it really look like it's getting blasted with light. Tip 3. Keep your strokes quick and confident. This is how you can achieve a smoother and cleaner line. A lot of us will have a slight shake or wobble to our hand when we're drawing a line slowly and we want to avoid those wobbly lines. Tip 4. Don't be afraid to go over lines again to get the look that you want. Not all lines need to be done in one stroke. Tip 5. Thicken up lines in small crevices of folds, cracks, or even areas like under the chin to create more depth and make the art more 3D. These thick lines or areas filled in will usually be in areas getting little to no light. Thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial. I hope this helps you ink your manga or comic more effectively. You can now see how just the outline can help tell your story more clearly and how you can use certain tricks to direct the reader's eyes. If you found this video useful, hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. Until next time, see ya.